I got my master's in creative writing from the University of Maryland. And it's a prestigious program. But it was a, a really difficult experience for me, right? I grew up in New York City, born and raised in Harlem, or Harlem adjacent. They always change the neighborhood name, right? So we'll call it that. Um, and I would write about those experiences, coming from the Dominican diaspora, coming from the black diaspora. And I was in a space where, although there were 15 students in the program, I was the only one of Afro descent. I was the only one from the Latinx experience who was writing about that. There was another woman who was Cuban but didn't write in any capacity about that experience. And I was the only person writing about being from an inner city. Right, so all of my work was like very palpably like little barrio stories, you know, that I was trying to hand over. And I would get my work back, and all of my classmates would have like question marks on the side, and like would circle all the Spanish words. I'm like, you don't want to Google that shit? Like, you don't want to look that up? <laughs> right, like this is easy. Um, and I struggled. I struggled being in a white space telling stories that I realized may not be for that audience. And I thought perhaps I wasn't a writer anymore because I couldn't reach this demographic. I, you know, good writing should be able to really grasp people regardless of who they are. And it really hit me that I just had a very different experience than a lot of the people in that room. My professor came to class and was like, I just read the most amazing poem about deer. And I got no beef with deer, right? I think venison is delicious. <laughs> now that I'm on this side of the river, we got deer all over the place. I'm like, oh, that's cute, okay. <laughs> But I just think we have this stereotype of what poetry can be about. And like they love these well-observed poems about like deer and flowers and grass. And I'm like, all right, but also, <laughs> right? So my professor goes on and on about this deer poem and then goes one step further and says, I want everybody in the room to write an animal, which is a praise poem, right? He goes to one classmate, he's like, what would you write about? My classmate's like, I'll write about the blackbird which is like biting off of Elizabeth Bishop. So I'm like, not original. He goes to another classmate and she's like, I would write about sea anemones. I would Google it on the table, like, what the fuck is a scene? <laughs> like, why would you write about that, right? And then my professor gets to me, and they always say, write what you know. That's the one piece of like advice you always get. Like, stick close to your experience. It's my first year, I'm trying to impress people in the room. I'm like, what creature do I know? And I'm hype. I'm like, yo, I would write about rats. <laughs> <laughs> and my professor looked at me and said, Rats are not noble enough creatures for a poem. Mm. I think you need more experiences, Liz. And I think there's something insidious about telling a person who comes from the very first colonized country on this side of the world, who is actively writing about colonization and coming from that kind of body and space, that they should be aspiring towards nobility. Mm. When it was that very group of people and that very concept, right? that colonized us in the first place. So I wrote a poem called Rattle. It's my official clap back to that professor. Um, and it's for anybody in this room who has ever been told their story is too small or too ugly or too different for high art. We are all of us deserving of poetry. So the rap. Because you are not the admired nightingale. Because you are not the noble doe. Because you are not the picturesque ermine, armadillo, or bat. They have been written and I don't know their song the way I know your scuttling between walls. The scent of your collapsed corpse rotting beneath floorboards. Your frantic squeal as you pull at your own fur from glue traps. Ripping flesh from skin in an attempt to survive. Cause in July of 97, you birthed a legion on 109th. Sworn from behind the dumpsters, made our streets infamous for something other than crap. Shit, we nicknamed you Cat Killer. Mm -hmm. Raced with you through open hydras, squeaked like you when Siete blasted aluminum back into your brethren's skull. The sound slapped down dominoes. You reigned that summer rat, and even when they sent exterminators, half dead and on fire, you pushed on, because even though you are an inelegant, simple, Mammal bottom feeder, always freaking famished little ugly thing who feasts on what crumbs fall from the corners of our mouths. You live uncuddled, uncoddled, can't be bought at Petco and fed to fat snakes because you are not the maze rat of labs. Pale, pretty eyed, trained, you raise yourself. Sharp fang, clawed, scarred, patched dark because of this, he should love you. But look at the beast, the poet tells me. 
The table is already full, and right, you are not a right worthy thing. Every time they say that, take your gutter, your dirt coat, filth this page, right? Scrape your underbelly against street concrete. You better squeak and raise the whole world, right? Let loose a plague of words, right? And remind them that you, that I, we are worthy of every poem. Here.